Hello YouTube, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan Workington. Here's yet another tutorial on creating a chess engine. I've added a few comments just to make uh, my last notes clear. Um, these are the pieces, white is capital, black is lowercase, and so on, kings being A. I have my strategy which is alpha beta uh, tree diagram which I'll explain uh, some other time. And so here's an example of uh, of my move notation, 1, 2, 3, 4, B represents row 1, column 2, moves to row 3, column 4, which captures B. And a space would represent no capture. So that's basically uh, how it goes. Now I'm going to just quickly change the title here to Chess, chess Tutorial. And uh, we will actually uh, uh, get rid of all of this because we're not oh, uh, we're not interested in uh, in creating a graphical user interface right now. Uh, we will be running uh, more with output, so lines of text as you see here. Uh, my program displays a graphical interface and this sort of lines of code. So you can see it thought through this many moves in the exact number of milliseconds as moves. Here it took more milliseconds than moves. See, I can I can go through this. Here it took. Uh, yeah, and so on. And so I can see what moves did it think of, and so on. Um, oh, and by the way, this is the basic move notation. So here we have a 6-3 to 4-3, and no capture. Um, that is a move, and then it just goes on to the next move. And there's one move, and there's one move, and so on. And then moves with captures, for instance, 7-4, 4-4-P. Uh, that is a capture there. And, uh, yeah, I just have the two displayed there. So... And that's uh, sort of how our possible moves, that's the string we want it to return. Now, how are we going to get it to return this string? Uh, one thing I should change, uh, possible is spelled with one S, uh, my mistake there. Uh, the first thing we will come up with is a, a string called list. And so we'll call, uh, we'll declare that string list equals blank. <clears throat> and there we go. Now we'll uh, create a for loop. We're going to go through each, we want to go through each of our pieces. Each one of these, these are, we're talking about white right now. So we want to go through each one of these and check what's the possible move for this piece? What's the possible move for this piece? What about all these bottom ones, which there will be none in the first turn, uh, except for the knights, of course. All right, so we first want to go through every square. Before we go through, let me make this place blank. Okay, so we want to go through every square and then out of each square we'll find out which ones are capitalized and that should narrow it down to which are our pieces so we'll start out with going through each square and the way we'll do that is creating a big for loop and integer i equals start initially at zero and then do uh, i is less than 64 because there's 8 times 8 is 64 and then do I++. plus plus. All right, there's our massive uh, for loop that is going to go through each one. And then we will say um, we're going to create a switch. I'll show you how this uh, works in just a second here. You might be familiar with it. We'll put in a chessboard. And then we'll put in I divided by 8. And if you've seen my Sudoku uh, uh, program, you'll understand what... Uh, modulus 8, this percentage sign it is, 8 stands for. Um, but basically this will go through each one. It'll go through 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, and all the way through 8. This will come through 8, and then this will move to 1, and this will come through 8. And so anyways, it'll go through each square uh, if you do the math. And this is basically produces a remainder of i divided by 8, and this produces... Uh, the whole number of i divided by 8. All right, so uh, within this, we will say uh, case p, and then do a colon. Um, now, uh, and then we'll just hit enter and hit break. Okay, I'll just show you what this does. Um, what we do is we go through, uh, this switch thing will be called out for each square and it this switch will send whatever is in that 
each one of those squares. And if it is a P, uh, right now we just say do nothing. But if it is a case, um, uh, let's say, uh, night, and always keep these capitals, and then break, and so on. So it'll say, if it's a P, do whatever's after this colon. So let's say uh, system.out.println um, let's say 1. Alright, so if it's a capital P, it's going to do this. If this thing in the brackets is a capital P, it'll do this. If it's a capital K, it's going to do whatever's after here. And so on. So all we do is uh, say if it's a P, if it's a K, if it's a Queen, if it's a if it's an A for a King, and so on. Do all these things, and if none of these happen, it will just do nothing. You can have a case default where if none of these happen, do this. But we don't want anything to happen. We're just looking at our pieces. And for the sake of time, I am gonna be lazy and copy this and paste it. Mainly because I'm lazy. Um, so this is how it's going to work. We're going to have, oh, I should make it less indented, there we go. So what we're going to do is uh, have a pawn, uh, rook, knight, bishop, queen, and king. Now, um, let's get rid of this comment here. Um, basically the way this goes through, so it goes through each square, and um, for all the capital ones, which could, which all these uh, cover, um, it will do a command, and the rest it will just ignore. So if it's uh, a P, then it will list, and it will find out the possible uh, moves that that pawn can make at location I. It will send it location I, so it knows which P, because uh, if you just say, ah, there's a pawn, uh, it wants to know which P. Is it talking about this one or this one? So for each move, it will tell it, ah, this is the location of that one, and it's a pawn, what moves? And possible P will return a list of moves. And so it will be added to the list. It will return a five-character uh, uh, thing based on pawns and so on. And then at the end, it is going to return not a blank, but list. This thing will return the list. All right. So obviously, um, you need to have a public static uh, string. Each one of these will need to return a string uh, to be added to the list. It needs a string. And the first one would be, of course, possible P. And I believe in my program, I had written as, yes, at left it as I. So it will be integer I. You have to tell it what. Uh, you can't just say i because it doesn't know uh, what type of variable an i is. Is it uh, um, is i a string or an integer or what? So and then we'll just for now put uh, uh, whoops return. Um, well, we will create a list, I guess. Uh, yeah, we'll create a list. So we'll do a string list. Make it blank and then we'll say return list. So right now it just uh, is a, um, it would just return an empty string. And now we will duplicate that a bunch of times. And so one, the first one's of course a pawn, and then we'll keep the same order. A pawn, knight, and you notice they, uh, the pawn knight, oops, uh, rook. Did I have the same order in mind? I uh, know. Yeah. So sorry. It's a pawn. It's a rook. It's a knight. Uh, bishop, queen, a. So bishop, queen, and a. So each one of these will be returning uh, whatever it was sent. 
So that's basically uh, the uh, basics of how we will be creating a list of moves. We'll take each piece of ours and say, where can it move? Add that to the total list of possible moves. And at the end, we will uh, display those moves. So I look forward to the next tutorial. And until then, enjoy Java.